Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Can we get a round of applause to start the night? We need to get the energy up. Before, before we start uh, practically any, any celebration or any work in Borough Hall, we always like to put God first, and we would like to call up uh, Pastor Ulysses uh, to say a few words. Let's all rise for the prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we pray and ask your presence to guide us this evening. We pray that you bless our elected officials, bless our land, forgive our trespassing. We ask your Holy Spirit to bless everything we propose to do this evening. And at the end, we can go back to our home. Give wisdom, understanding to all those you have elected to serve this community. We pray for those who are in need in the city. We pray for our law enforcement officers who risk their lives daily to keep us safe. We pray also for those from Brooklyn who are serving in the military. We pray for our government, national and local. Bless everything we propose to do. Bless our city. Father God, we bring before thee uh, elected officials, particularly uh, Councilwoman Mercedes Nelsis, who devoted her life to serve this community. Rita Joseph and everyone serving Brooklyn, protect them, bless them, bless our country. As we celebrate the Haitian flag, we cannot forget our brothers and sisters in Haiti. We pray, Father God, that you have mercy on our land. Protect our brothers and sisters and deliver our country. We pray that you touch the heart of the president and those in authority here who can have a favor in Haiti. All this we ask in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for that great, great introduction and welcome to Borough Hall. Your house, the people's house. Uh, I think a lot of people say people's house, but we're really going to make this the people's house. You guys are going to have a good time. We want to let all the elected officials know that we want to get through this part very quickly so we get to the music and food downstairs and actually have some fun. So I'm just letting you know that I gave out a warning to these elected officials first and foremost because they like to talk a bit, uh, don't they? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I am going to... Just say, this is a, a great honor for me uh, to host uh, the Haitian Flag Raising Day. Um, as you all know, well, most of you might know, but not everybody. I'm Antonio Reynoso, the president of the Borough of Brooklyn. And it is a great, it is a great, a great honor for me to be here before you. Um, I am about as fortunate and privileged as a person can possibly be. Extremely, extremely blessed and grateful to ever be in a position to represent the entire borough. Um, and thank you all for coming for the Haitian flag raising today. I wanna welcome all my brothers and sisters from the other side of the island in Haiti that are here celebrating together. Uh, I also wanna make sure that we recognize and welcome everyone here because today is a very important day. We're recognizing Haiti. And a lot of people don't know about Haiti's rich tradition and culture and history. Um, and I think is, uh, education is always important uh, I wasn't taught this in, in school, but maybe I should have. Um, but, of course, through an education from the Dominican Republic, uh, learned more about Haiti than I did ever in this country. Uh, and we need to recognize the power of this country that was the first free country, an independent country in the Western Hemisphere in all of the world. And that is extremely important because the strength and power of Haiti and the work that they did to become independent 
then spurred and sparked revolutions across the Caribbean and across South America and across Central America. And they laid the groundwork and the foundation for the independence of many other countries thereafter. Uh, and that model, that, that fight that they had made it so a lot of these countries that thought they didn't have the resources or the power or the might to be able to take on these European countries, Haiti changed that. They showed that a country that was believed to be a slave country, that was believed to be in, inferior, taking on the great power of the European countries. And boy, did they show them. Boy, did they show them. And from there, again, sparked revolutions across uh, the Western Hemisphere. And I just want to thank Haiti for that. And you guys are all recipients of that greatness here. I want to thank you all and all the descendants um, of Haiti for the great work that they did, of course, in becoming independent. Um, I am Dominican from the Dominican Republic and also uh, relish in the great work of Haiti. Um, and again, laying the foundation for the entire, the entire island of Hispaniola um, and recognizing uh, the partnerships and the history of Haiti and Dominican relationships um, that were always strong and powerful. I was the only Dominican elected official um, that stood up against the Dominican uh, country when they put forth racist immigration laws that took away, <laughs> that took away the independence, so I want to be very clear, took away the independence of 50,000 Dominicans of Haitian descent. It's the first thing they did. And then after that, rewrote laws to make uh, what they call to delegitimize the millions or thousands of workers that the Dominican Republic brought in to do all the work that they didn't want to do, and then sending them back over to Haiti where they, where they left that country. They know the Dominican Republic as their home, but sending them back after we needed them to keep us out of the holes that we've set for, for ourselves and economic development and opportunities that were created. So I stood up against the Dominican government. I was called a, in a national Dominican newspaper, a persona non grata and traidor, so traitor, so the two things. But the Dominican Republic came to its senses and gave citizenship or re, recommitted to the citizenship of the 50,000 Dominicans of Haitian descent and they all got their cedulas or their citizenship papers thereafter because of the fight of people like you and like me in making sure that we stood against their racist policies. Um, now we have more work to do um, with the relationships in the Dominican Republic and Haiti. But I think that the work we do here on this, in this country, in the work that we do with our elected officials in showing unity and power in unity and that we can do better here and over there will make it so that the relationships between the Dominican Republic and Haiti will strengthen and we will be hopefully one island united. So thank you again so much for allowing me to say a few words here today. And I'm gonna also wanna just recognize uh, my Brooklyn colleagues because Haiti is not playing any games when it comes to elected officials. You guys are strength in numbers is an understatement because right now you guys have Council Member Mercedes Narcisse, stand up, stand up. <laughs> Council Member Chio Say. <laughs> Council Member Rita Joseph. <laughs> and Council Member Farrell Lewis, who's not here right now, but Council Member Farrell Lewis, the most Haitians represented in the city council, in the history of the city council exists right now. Clap that up, please. <laughs> In Brooklyn, exactly. Brooklyn is always leading the way. Sac passe. Um, so I want to end by saying thank you all. Welcome. Welcome. And I want to bring up the MC of the night, because it's not going to be me. The MC of the night. Felina Baker, where you at? Where are you? She's small and mighty. Oh, there you go. We need a... How you doing? Wait up. We need to get a platform up here. So let... Joe, can we... Yeah. Now, you're going to find out about her real quick if you don't know. That she doesn't really need this platform, but we're going to give it to her. Um, but just to keep it going, you're going to have to start. No problem. Can, can they see you there? Of course they can. As can long as you can there? see my head. Can you see my head? Uh, All right. That's what matters, right? All right. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing this evening? I, I, I am not liking this, you know. 
Let's try this. How are you feeling this evening, everybody? Ay, 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 ay. Come on, ouye, come on, ouye, na boule. Ay, 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 c'est ça, c'est ça. Merci, merci. Um, it's such a pleasure to see all of you here this evening. But before we continue, we must sing the Haitian National Anthem. So I'm going to ask everyone to please stand. Oh, I have a platform. I'm going to get taller in a quick second. Wow, miracles do happen. And I am taller. Thank you, President. That's why I love my president. Pour le pays, pour les ancêtres, marchons unis, marchons unis dans nos rangs pour être traîtres. Du sol soyons seuls, mais toi, marchons unis, marchons unis pour le pays, pour les ancêtres, marchons, marchons, marchons unis pour le pays, pour le pays, pour le pays, pour les ancêtres. Okay, you may be seated, please. But well, welcome, welcome. And for those who are, please, I mean, sitting, I mean, standing back there, can you please come forward, please? We have seating available for you. And at this time, we are going to welcome um, to this podium Commissioner of the Mayor's Office for Immigrant Affairs, Manuel. Castro, come on, put your hands together for him. Thank you so much and welcome. Thank you so much. You so much. And um, I couldn't be here and not announce this or say this, but in our executive budget just released uh, a couple of weeks ago, we have included an additional $1.6 million to support these organizations and the community uh, with these critical services. You'll hear the official announcement in the next couple of days, but I'm so proud to be uh, able to continue to work with these organizations, many of whom I've been uh, making my way, visiting, mostly here in Brooklyn, and it's been just tremendously special, uh, frankly, meeting uh, Haitian immigrants and hearing their stories and hearing how much more support they need. I've especially been touched by the young Haitian immigrants that I have met. I just uh, met with Fan Buyan, who works with dreamers and uh, younger, newly arrived immigrants. And I met a number of dreamers the last time I visited Fan Buyan, and I shared with them that I also came to this country when I was five years old. I was undocumented, I grew up a dreamer, and like them, I made my way to now be a commissioner for the city of New York. So. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. So it has been really special meeting with, with Haitian New Yorkers, making sure that I'm listening to their continued needs and to continue to fund the organizations that are doing the work on the ground. So again, thank you so much for having me here. Big shout out to our council members here today. Um, I look forward to working with all of you. I've had great conversations. 
Uh, I'm really here to support and make sure that the services that our communities uh, need are there and looking forward to working with you. So with that said, on behalf of Mayor Eric Adams and on behalf of the City of New York, congratulations and thank you so much. much thank you and please let's just give a round of applause to the city council members sitting here once again all right count well i know the president already um said your name but we also want to shout out to um the deputy borough president miss diana richardson please rise Woo. yes beautiful we have some women in the house all right, great. We want, we want to welcome at this time, right? Brooklyn Chamber, President, Randy Pierce. So come on, everyone. Great. All right. Well, first of all, thank you to God for allowing me to stand here tonight. The biggest blessing in my life has been to be born and raised here in Brooklyn because I get to celebrate everybody. And I'm grateful that you've allowed me into your house tonight, Mr. Borough President. I am grateful to all of our council members and elected leaders of Haitian descent. Now, when I was this little boy growing up in East Flatbush, going to PS 269, a lot of my friends were Haitian. My best friend, Serge Francois, was Haitian. And that was my first experience when I was a little kid with Haitian culture. When I got to Brooklyn College, we took it to a different level. Yes. <laughs> HASA, Haitian American Students Alliance, no joke with their politics. Now, they had an office down in the basement of Ingersoll Hall. They did two things. Number one, they cut hair. They always wanted to cut my hair. I was like, oh, God, you know, I'm not going to let you cut my hair. <laughs> and number two, they talked politics. When I say talk politics, sometimes they talked politics. And at other, other times, they just were passionate about what they believed and what they cared for. They were also passionate, uh, in many times, they were passionate about religion. And it's another thing that I've learned from my Haitian brothers and sisters uh, in terms of my faith. So here we are celebrating Haiti. We're celebrating Haitian culture. We're celebrating history. We're celebrating Flag Day. And I just want to say to all of you, to all of our elected officials, and to everyone here that makes Haitian Brooklyn so special, thank you. Thank you for what you do each and every day, and God bless. Wonderful, great, great. And we also want to acknowledge Judge Dweeney Paul. Yes, yes, yes. All right, great, great. How are you doing so far? Great. Council member Mercedes, are you okay? Okay, where are the flags? Come on, I want to see the flags. I want to see the flags. All right. Oh, it looks pretty. Where's the photographer? Where's the photographer? Oh, you're going to have the deputy president be the photographer? All right, no problem. Where's the DJ? Because maybe he could play something in the meantime. All right. Hold on. Okay, we have, okay, we have the photographer. Oh, yeah, all right, all right, come on, raise them, yes. All right, look at that, this is awesome, beautiful. Haiti Nula, di Haiti Nula. Haiti Nula, Haiti Nula. Okay, me DJ, all right, all right, thank you so much. All right, DJ, uh-huh, merci, 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 very good. And we are moving forward, and at this time, I'd like to acknowledge Anthony Beckford and Naomi Ritter, from State Assembly Member Brian Cunningham. Are you here? Okay. We also want to acknowledge the following organizations. Uh, 61st Precinct, Captain Derby Saint-Fort. Tu es là? Où es-tu? Il n'est pas là? Okay. Okay, 69th Precinct, Community Affairs. Where are you? All right. Well, we can still clap. Come on, you can still clap. Very good. Brooklyn Emerge. Okay, thank you for your partnership. All right. Simon 
Weisenthal Center, Elizabeth Cohen. Where are, okay, thank you. All right, she's right over there. Thank you for coming. Canarsie, Canarsie's in the house. Canarsie Community Development. All right, all right, very good. Um, Harold Jones, that is his name. Is he here? But I just know that you guys are here. Great. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your partnership. All right, and so at this time, I don't see the mayor, the former mayor, he's not here, but he should be here shortly. All right, so we are going to move forward. And DJ, can you just play a little something, please? Because I think they're getting a little cold. All right, just something, just to keep people. You can, you can raise it up, you can raise it up. All right, all right, we love that. Do you like Haitian music? Do you like Haitian music? All right, thank you, DJ, thank you, DJ. And I'm going to continue to acknowledge the following individuals. Um, we have council member Natasha Williams from Queens. Queens is also in the house. All right, Mr. Smith, her rep is here. Hey, Mr. Smith, thank you so much for attending. And of course, we have council member Farah. Louis, who just walked in, please stand up. All right, Farah, thank you so much, council member. All right, again, another woman. <laughs> woman leading. I don't know, Ochi. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I apologize. I'm sorry, what did you say, Cal? We prefer it this way, all right. All right, great, great, great. Okay, so at this time, we are going to have a presentation, and I hope that uh, it's ready at this time, and if not, we're going to move forward. Okay. All right, we have a musical selection by Eddie Bourjoli, the man behind the guitar. He's such a great guitarist. And we also have a conga player, who is a former musician from Ram. We have some great musicians here. So come on, clap your hands for them, please. All right, thank you so much, guys. And you know what, I just asked them, because they're set to play downstairs to entertain us later. You know, we're gonna have some great music, but I was like. Okay, great. Thank you, Eddie Bourjoli and um, our Congo. I'm sorry. Beautiful. And yes, I am going to now introduce you to our council member, the only Haitian male. Sorry, I'm going to keep saying that because my women, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, Chi Ose, please welcome to the stage at this time. All right. And we also want to acknowledge our former mayor, Bill de Blasio. kind of tall on this platform. <laughs> I look like Mayor Bill de Blasio. <laughs> there we go. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. That's better. Hello, everyone. My name is Chi Osei. I'm the council member representing the 36th district, so Bedford Syverson in Northern Crown Heights. I love being at this event because every event that people introduce me they see Chi Osi, Chai Osi. Thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. We're in the right building tonight. We got four Haitians elected into the New York City Council. That is history making. And I want to share a, a couple reasons why. And I know some of my colleagues that heard me speak yesterday uh, bear with me, but. The four of us elected isn't just for glitz and glam and show of, of making history. It's important. Uh, right now, we are seeing a crisis happen in the country of Ukraine. And you may be wondering, why am I talking about Ukraine right now on Haitian Flag Day? But bear with me. You know, the refugee crisis that we're seeing in Ukraine is intense. It's, it's saddening. Um, it's horrific to see the scenes that we're seeing on TV day in and day out. But I want us to all recognize and look very closely at how this country is reacting to the refugees of the Ukraine. 
the United States of America has opened their arms, has smiled, and has welcomed those that are fleeing a war-torn country every single day, the second that this crisis opened up. And that's great. You know, the crisis in Ukraine is bad, and we should be opening our arms in this country to those refugees. But as a Haitian American, and as my colleagues as Haitian Americans, we see that there's a hypocrisy in this country. This past year, we saw Haitians fleeing into this country, trying to go over the Texas border and being whipped by white men on horsebacks. This country has a racist and deep issue with how it respects and treats the Haitian people. Our country is still paying debts from revolting against the French. This country is still paying debts against the United States of America. We come from a country of proud people, the first black republic in the world. That is no easy feat. And we're still revolutionary people here today. And now, as council members in the city council, and as people, as Haitian people in this room, we have to recognize and call out this hypocrisy. We need to be holding the United States accountable. We need to be holding New York City accountable because our people need it. You know, the same issues that are happening in the Ukraine are, are sometimes akin to those of that in our motherland. So we as city council members, you know, we're, we're here uh, to be representative of our people, but to also hold uh, our city government accountable and the United States of America accountable. Now I want to talk about a historic Haitian figure, a very, a very important one, uh, because we're celebrating women today. Even though uh, we're in a, a female majority city council, which I love, I always love celebrating the, 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 the women revolutionaries of the past, especially those that are Haitian. So here, pictured right now, is Marie-Jean La Martinier. Bear with me with my accent. She served in the Haitian army during the revolution. She dressed in male uniform and fought alongside her husband, and she fought at the Battle of Crete à Piro, the last battle in the Haitian Revolution. She's history, just like these history makers sitting in front of me, just like my colleagues in the council, these Haitian women that fought hard, long races, and won to fight for their people. Now, I'm so proud to be standing here to celebrate a day that means so much to me and, and so much to my community. And I'm just so thankful to see this turnout today and thankful for the borough president for hosting us here today to celebrate Haitian Flag Day. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Thank you council member. And um, at this time, we are going to call council member Mercedes Narcisse, who is going to speak on, be I mean, on behalf of Catherine Thorne. Please put your hands together for the council member. Good evening, everyone. And you want to make me taller? Yes. Oh my God, I thought I was tall enough. Okay, so now I bypass this one. Um, it's a pleasure to be here to celebrate um, the flag. Some folks ask me why we are celebrating the flag because there's so much horror going on in Haiti. Our brothers and sisters as in Tormo, and like Chiose mentioned, we're crossing the border with our children on our back, on our head. We whip by the folks on horses that remind us so much of history of this country. The reason I do so is because I love being Haitian. I love my Haitian folks. Whenever that I have to celebrate, I am gonna raise my flag, like Chiose mentioned, with the first republic, black republic, in the world, saying no to slavery, talking about freedom. It is important to know that once upon a time, we were at the Pearl, which is the beautiful island. But unfortunately, with everything, all the unrest, all the death, that people claim that we owe because we fought for our right. This is the reason we are in a lot of things that we are in um, today. The reason that I celebrate my flag 
and I will ne never let anyone tell me to bring it down. I'm gonna rise it up when you tell me to bring it down or to turn it down. I'm gonna raise it higher because I have so many people that bled, died for me to get my freedom when no one else in the world wanted to talk about slavery. But we dare, we did. We, we sure did. And we got our independence not only for ourselves, we got it for all our brothers, sisters across the world, no matter what color, gender, race, whatever, whoever you are, wherever you were, we said you can come home. Haiti was open to be home for everyone. It is unfortunate, but moving forward, so one of the, the women that struck me, and as a matter of fact, when you go down and say, sorry, Mel, I love you, Mel. I love you all the Mel, but it is about the women leadership we're talking about today. It is important because to take us out of what we are, because I love you guys again, but we have a holistic approach. As a nurse, I'm gonna tell you that's for sure. So that's the reason we're celebrating to push up the women and big up, like we said in Jamaican way, to big up the, the women. And one of the things too, not only that I love who I am, where I'm from, but it's a passion of the Haitian folks. The caring for each other. I love you guys in the room. And even you're not Haitian, I love you because that's what my ancestor told me, that I have to take care of one another as long as we're on this planet. So today, I'm going to play the role of Catherine Flo, the heroine of the Haitian Revolution and goddaughter of Jean-Jacques Dessalines. She sold the Haitian flag in Akaye on May 18, 1803. During the Congress of Akaye, after Dessalines ripped out the white portion of the French flag to create the red and blue Haitian flag, and that woman happened to be Catherine Floor. So ladies and gentlemen, do more reading about the Haitian history and understand what's going on today. So when the board is open, it should not open for one color, one race. Just let's do it like Haitian did it back in 1804. So thank you, I love you, and I appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, council member. Oh, wait a minute, we, we, we see hats. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I'm sorry, council member, you're leaving, but I need to see your hat. We all need to see your hat. Ah, wow, this is beautiful. I'm sorry, I don't know, she's just, Wow, this is beautiful, this is beautiful. Wow, awesome, thank you so much. And now we are going to call upon Farah Louis, and she's going to speak on behalf of Victoria Montu. Please welcome her to the stage, to the podium, come on. Good evening, everyone. Sakpase, that is very easy and universal. Sakpase, all right. I'm happy to see such phenomenal people here this evening. I'm Councilmember Farrah Lewis, representing the 45th Council District, and I want to thank Borough President Antonio Reynoso and Deputy Borough President Richardson for hosting. So let's give them a round of applause for thinking about the Haitian community. And I want everybody to give a resounding round of applause for former Mayor Bill de Blasio, who's in the room. I've been meaning to text you and tell you thank you. Thank you for everything. You took care of our community, especially in the times when we needed it the most, you were there for us. So I wanna say thank you. Give it up for him again. Thank you, Mercedes, for organizing this today. Give her a round of applause for organizing this with the borough president. And to, I'm happy to see my colleague, Council Member Joseph. We have our commissioner here, Commissioner Castro. Thank you for being here. And tonight, I'm gonna be speaking about Victoria Abadira Toy, Toya Monto. So, how many people know about her? Just read us. All right. <laughs> Victoria Aberdaya Toya Monto. 
Her real name was Abradiah Toya. So I'm going to refer to that because Victoria is her slave name. She was a freedom fighter. She's considered the mother of the Haitian Revolution. She was a midwife. She was a healer. She prepared Dessalines for the revolution. She was considered a skilled warrior and fighter. I see a lot of that and our colleagues in the council, in the assembly, and just the women in our community that we see every day. But most importantly, I see it in the women who migrated here from Haiti, from Panama, from Chile, who walked to Mexico and Texas for political asylum, for freedom, for a better way of life. Abradiah is not just a figure, she is who we are. Nous petite de Saline. And she was considered de Saline's aunt. She wasn't really his aunt. You know how you say, like, that's my auntie? She prepared him because they were both living in Henry de Colas's estate. And they were slaves to Henry. But while they were there together, she was preparing him for a revolution a new way of life to stop oppression. When I think of oppression, I think of our current political state that we're in right now. Persecution, cruelty, disrespect, and injustice. I'm talking about George Floyd injustice. And I could go on and on and on and on. But think about for a second. You're crossing over bodies of water, jungles, where you see alligators, gorillas, all different types of animals you see on TV coming for you to kill you and your family, and you're trying to get to the promised land. It makes me think about Aberdiah and what she fought for and what she wants us to remember each and every day as regular human beings, but most importantly, Haitian. Africans, because we're black. I want us, Haitians, I'm gonna talk to the Haitians for a second, excuse me, people. Don't forget what Abradaya did for us. The sacrifice that she made to unify despite dissension happening in the camps that they were in. It was just about being black and wanting freedom. There was no politics. It was about freedom. What's your freedom? What does that look like to you today? Sometimes I don't feel free. Because the same tools they used to beat our Haitian migrants at the border we use those same tools on each and every one of us today in our Haitian community. You get this a matinette. They call this a matinette. Our slave owners made this to whip us, to beat us, to oppress us, and to cause injustice. And Aberdiah was against that. We should too. Don't use the same tools our oppressors gave us on one another. With what we say to one another, with what we do to one another, how we treat one another. Aberdiah didn't die for no reason. She went down with a fight. I'm gonna go down with a fight. Mayor de Blasio, you're gonna go down with a fight. Are we going down with a fight? The dissension, and I'm sorry to take it here, but I'm doing it, I don't care. Kick me off the stage. But the dissension in our community has to stop. The oppressor taught us how to fight against one another. And it may not be this tool, but it's what we say and what we do that's hurting one another. And the more we hurt one another in New York City, in Boston, in Georgia, 
Arizona. This is where Haitians live. The more we do that, the worse. Haiti Shiri will never, ever be the same. Stop using what the oppressor gave us against one another and use what Abadiah gave us, and that's freedom. Thank you. Miracles do happen. All right, thank you so much, council member. All right, and we have one more council member coming up. Council member Rita Joseph, who is going to represent Cecile Fatima. Please welcome her to the podium. I was about to say the stage, because I'm so used to the stage, right? Are you guys, well, we do have a stage. Come on, clap your hands for her now. Thank you. Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Farah, my sister, that was deep. Thank you. And you have your warrior sisters with you in the council. We got your back. Today I'm gonna talk about another warrior woman. So I'm dressed like her, so I'm gonna embody her. It's an honor to be here with all of you. Welcome to Brooklyn Borough Hall and happy Haitian Flag Day. Thank you, Borough President. Thank you, um, Deputy Borough President, for having us here. Today's theme for Haitian Flag Day is celebrating women warriors of the Haitian Revolution. They never get any credit for making sure that we were the first black republic to be free. So today we are honoring them. I have the honor today to be pre presenting a great and extraordinary woman Cecile Fatima, who was instrumental in the Haitian Revolution. Cecile Fatima is known for her participation in the voodoo ceremony at Boakayima, which was the starting point of the revolution. It happened in August 14. This ceremony was a prophet, prophecy that the slaves would end up being the leader in revolt against the French oppressors. Throughout the ceremony, Cecile exuded her inner feminist energy by acting as if she was possessed by God, Ezili. Igniting energy and prophecy, the freedom of those were enslaved. Cecile Fatima was a spiritual anchor within the Haitian Revolution. Cecile Fatima never gave up the fight to liberate those who were enslaved and show us the true power of being a Haitian woman. Cecile lived up to be 112 years old. I hope I get to live to be 112. <laughs> I hope I inherited those genes. She lived a life of resistance, perseverance, and a true warrior for the Haitian people. Today, we stand on the shoulders of Cecile Fatima, who shows us the true impact and contribution women have made in the Haitian Revolution. We must continue to lift the voices of women as they continue to fight for a fairer Haiti. I know all of you present here will continue to do all you can to support Haiti and its people as she continued to fight to remain resilient against ever-increasing gang violence and other ills that plagues our beloved Haiti. Thank you and God bless you all. All right, thank you so much, council member Rita Joseph. All right, oh my gosh, all right, clap your hands for her. Thank you so much. And this is, well, thank you ladies for representing our ancestors. Okay, and at this time we are going to... And at this time we are going to call council member Mercedes Narcisse. She is going to, of course, welcome our former mayor. I'm sorry, hey. Come on, guys, where's the energy? Come on, do you want some music before the mayor, before the former mayor? Okay, he said he wants some music, yeah. Come on, come on. P4, 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 P4. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. No, but come here, we. Uh, uh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh uh, come on, 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 
Cote flagyo, cot oh, cote flagyo, cote flagyo, oh oh, cote trapo yo, ah ah. Oh oh, oh oh, oh oh. Ah, okay, on back. Un, deux, trois, quatre. Un, deux, trois, quatre. Un, deux, trois, quatre. All right. Woo! Come on, let me let's see some move. Let's see some move. Let's see some. Yeah. The former mayor is dancing Haitian music. All right. Once again, you may wonder why I have to come to introduce this man next to me. I'm not going to say former mayor because I knew him as a friend before all the power. And that's the beauty of it. And the reason I have to come back to introduce this gentleman, the mayor of New York City, is the fact that when most did not believe in me to become the city council of New York City of the 46th district, he sure did. He knew that I was going to be elected. He told me I was going to be elected when everything, everyone was against me in the 46th district. And he knew all the people that was doing all that. We knew all of them together. We go to the same ring because I've been involved since I was in high school in politics. But at first, I was not interested in becoming an elected official. I was supporting others. But in him, he kept telling me, Mercedes, your time going to come and be ready. And when I said I was going to run, so because of him, today we're calling me honorable counsel. But I don't mind for all those titles. Tell you honestly, it's people that believe in you, that knows that you're going to do the right thing, no matter whether people are looking at you, watching you. He just knew that. And for that, he's a friend. He's always going to be my friend, ever. And I don't even call him mayor. I call him Bill. Listen, you got to listen. <laughs> and he goes, like, okay, Mercedes. So now it is my pleasure to call on him right now to the stage as we celebrate this flag because of him, of his support, and many others, but him came down to my district knowing the same people, but he was willing to do it, to do the right thing by me. So I thank you, my friend, and I'm celebrating today as a city council member because you believe in me. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Now you can have the mic. <laughs> Thank you, Mercedes. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Let me dispense with this podium. I first have to speak about Mercedes. She invited me here tonight. I want to do my very brief impression of a typical phone call between me and Mercedes over the last decade. This is first what Mercedes would say. She'd say, Bill, am I a city council member yet? I'd say, Mercedes, not quite yet. But you will be a city council member. About an hour later, she'd say, am I a city council member now? I'd say, no, but you will be a city council member. Now, this went on for about a decade. But we talk about what it means to be committed to a cause and to see it through. Mercedes never once, literally never once, did I ever hear her talk about giving up. Not for a second, no matter what was thrown at her. The warrior women, the heroines of 200 years ago, birthed the great nation. And their beliefs, their strength, it never went away. It magnified. You heard it in the powerful comments from Councilmember Lewis. Thank you, Farrah. That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Joseph, who I first met through her incredible work bringing up our children, teaching our children, believing we could do better every generation. That was her commitment, and she continues it now in public life. 
And remember, Mercedes didn't start out as a politician. She started out as a healthcare professional. And that was her service, and she wanted to magnify and build upon that service. And I will remind you, during COVID, when it was not easy, when you would not have blamed anyone for staying back, she raced to the front to help the community. And the community saw it, and that's why she is where she is today. That's why she is the person she is. So I want to thank every single one of you for keeping this tradition alive, not just patriotism as Haitian Americans, not just people who honor the history, but people who build upon it, deepen it, because this is a time where we've got to learn the lessons of these extraordinary heroes. We have to put them into action. We don't have the luxury of just talking about it or honoring the past because we've been handed a crisis of extraordinary proportions. I'm so thankful, uh, the borough president, deputy borough president, giving us this chance to be together and to say something very powerful and simple. The Haitian Revolution is not over. It's not complete. The Haitian Revolution helped free this hemisphere. It helped defeat colonialism. It helped to free black people all over the world. It helped to defeat imperialism against people of all colors. That's what this mighty nation did for all of us. But the work is not complete. And now, confronted in this moment in history with challenges that were not even believable a very few years ago, confronted with a crisis such as COVID or the challenge of climate crisis or the constant threat against our democracy and the racism that pervades literally every structure of our country and must be weeded out and stopped systematically. All of this is left to us. But I'll say something very simple as I conclude. I hold up this flag to honor it. And I say this flag empowers us. It tells us that we have a strength greater than what we realize. These heroines, do you think anyone said to them, you will lead a revolution against a global power, you will overthrow it, you will establish your own free nation. Do you think anyone said to them, this is going to be easy, this is going to be great, you got this? No. I wasn't there, but I can predict to you that they were told in so many ways what they could not do, that they were put down, they were degraded and devalued, but they found that strength in themselves. And they did something remarkable that literally changed the course of world events. Now, each one of us has to be those heroes and heroines in our own way. And it might be a simple act of helping one brother or sister in need, or it might be getting one person to vote who wouldn't have voted, or it might be raising your voice against the racism in the place you work or worship. There are many acts, big and small, or it might be the work that these leaders do every day, changing the world through legislation. But what we do know is we must follow the example of these heroes if we expect to survive. If we expect to survive, we do not have the option of cowardice. We only have the option of seeing and feeling our own strength and supporting each other. We hold up this flag, we honor it, now let's live it. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, bonsoir. All right. Merci, merci, merci. Okay, at this time, at this time, we are going to call, uh, I would say, all the council members, please position yourselves right in the middle. Council member Rita Joseph, council member Farah Louis, council member Mercedes Narcisse, 
Council. Oh, we're missing Ochi. Oh, he's not here. Oh, say. Okay, he had to leave. No problem. With the hats. Farah, where's your hat, council member? We need the hat. Yes. And I am going to call over. We're going to, um, at this time, uh, do a special presentation to uh, the Haitian band, Class It Is Baby. Where's class? Hi, Class It Is Baby. Yeah. So we are going to call the man on the drums. Yes, that's what I'm going to call you. <laughs> the man on the drums, but we don't have a drums at this time. Oh, yes, yes, clap for him. Your bonne bon musique. Come on, let's, let's rise for them. I mean, for him. Please, come on, everybody, please stand. Uh, now, I, I see how the Haitian already going like this. You know why? This gentleman here probably make them laugh and dance, make them happy. <laughs> because he can produce, he can sing, so we appreciate you. And um, before I even read one line, I have to say thank you to Jensen and Dr. Alert that nominates you. Where Jensen? I didn't even see Jensen in the room. He's outside, Dr. Alert, that makes sure to tell me that we should give you that proclamation. Because through all the things that we've been through, You've been standing up and you've been fighting, giving the words and keeping our flag up by your words. So we, which is all of us, all four of us, and the deputy here that pushed when she heard about it too. So thank you. We, the un undersigned council oh. members, are proud to honor the Haitian band class in celebration of Haitian Flag Day for its outstanding contribution to Haitian music and culture. And Haitian Flag Day is observed on May 18 by Haitians living in the outside of Haiti in celebration of Haitian independence and adoption of the Haitian flag um, in 1803. We cannot read all because we're running for time because we want you to have some fun time downstairs too with the music and everything, but you can have it. This is beautiful. This is all for you. Thank you. Congratulations. We appreciate you. Yes, dancez, dancez, dancez. <laughs> 